In this video, I'm gonna briefly explain webhooks in N8N and kind of how they work, the basics of what you need to know. This is not an advanced tutorial. This is just kind of a basics, you know, refresher video. That way you can kind of use them in your workflows in order to be able to extend your processes even further than you thought you might otherwise have been able to. Now, we'll start with what is a webhook. And I'll admit for years and years, I just had no idea. I, I, was, I was so ignorant of what they were actually able to do and I wish I had known because for years I was told, oh, well, if you wanna hook stuff up, you need to use Zapier. And uh, like once I figured out N8N and learned how webhooks actually work, I'm like, shoot, I didn't need Zapier all along because this is how you do it. Webhooks allow you to connect different services that may not otherwise have an API that you can directly hook into but you can use it to hook into N8N and act, have it act as the API that bridges everything together. All right, and so that's all a webhook is. It's, it's kind of like this uh, API for the poor man, a poor man's API, that you don't have to worry about credentials being pre-populated. You don't have to worry about any of that. Instead, you're gonna be able to pass data directly into N8N, process it just like you otherwise would, and then pass it back to the website that was collecting the data in the first place or passing it back to wherever it needs to be. And so I'll just give you a quick example. Let me find one. Um, here's one that I just built this past week. This one's a phone agent uh, that uses 11 labs, it uses Twilio and Google Calendar in order to be able to have um, uh, people call into a business schedule with a service provider to come out to their place to do something for them. And so what I'm doing is I'm using webhooks. And those webhooks are coming from 11 Labs. So I have 11 Labs up over here. Um, 11 Labs is super inexpensive. So you can do $5 a month and get 50 minutes of their conversational API or AI. And what it is is, uh, let's see here. Um, I don't wanna actually show you my agents, but you build an agent in here and you're able to create a, a conversational agent in 11 labs that will do the talking for you on the phone, all right? And in order to get it to work on the back end, because it'll have a conversation with the person, no problem, no problem at all. But to get it to actually do anything, like to check my calendar if I'm available, or to actually schedule on my calendar, or to send them a text message reminder, I need to actually have a webhook because there's no API into N8N, I need a webhook. So that's what we're using a webhook for. Now, there's different kinds of ways to activate the webhook. And so you, you'll see sometimes it says git, sometimes you see it says post. Um, and I'm not gonna go into the others like delete or head or patch or put because generally speaking, you're really ever going to be dealing with git and post. Those are the two that you're gonna be dealing with. And so um, which one you use? That depends on the service that you're connecting with. That depends on what the documentation says that you're, need, you're supposed to do. Uh, so for example, I think it was um, this service right over here, um, uh, API templates.io. I was building a, um, a template and I don't care that you see my template ID because it's in my account, you can't access it. But I was, I was trying to build a template and you know, I come over to the documentation over here. Here it is. And so um, I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do. So I need headers and authorizations and like, I'm like, what in the heck am I supposed to do? And you know, somewhere down, uh, somewhere in here, it says I'm supposed to do a git. Here, here it is over here, I'm blind. There it is, it says, it says post. So to create a PDF, I had to do a post. I, I just, I don't know, right, right? We don't know what it is until you find it in the service that you're trying to connect with. And so this service, is going to receive a, uh, a post request, okay? And so um, they're using a webhook because they don't have an API that directly, I mean, they do have an API that directly hook, hooks into it for the credentialing, um, but you need to use the webhook in order to actually send the data. Um, sometimes you don't. Now, um, NAN is a little tricky because they, um, they kind of hide this stuff from you. So let me um, uh, Stripe, let's just use Stripe for example. So I'll just click update charge, it doesn't matter. Anyway, see here, well, here we have our credentials and everything is like, okay, all packaged into one little bundle. But our operation is update, our resource is charge. We see these things, we don't actually realize these are, these are webhooks. 
um, these are actually the thing that is doing the process in N8N, and it's a webhook that's using a post request, most likely, into Stripe, or it could be using a Git if I'm getting information. And it's not always this, it's not always that simple. Sometimes I'm posting information with Git, and I, it's so confusing to me. I don't get it, but whatever. I just I just do whatever the documentation tells me to do. And um, these are all actually just kind of webhook nodes that are dressed up for the specific services. So just understand if you're using a straight webhook node, you do have to set it yourself as either a git or a post over here um, as a responder webhook. You don't have to set it there, but when you're, you have the trigger, you have to set it. Now, um, another thing you need to know is uh, sometimes you do need an authorization. So you, need, you may need additional credentials that get sent with it. Um, uh, and so that what it would do is it appends it to the URL. So here's the webhook URL. Um, it would add it to the end. So it'd be like question mark key equals, but you don't have to worry about that. You just set your credentials here, basic auth, uh, create a new credential or a header auth. Um, so you create your credential um, or just even a none. Um, so, and then don't, you know, just make sure you have your credentials set up the way it needs to be for whatever service you're setting it up. The other thing you need to know is this respond uh, item here. Sometimes when you are send, when you're receiving a webhook from a service. So as an example, I use ClickFunnels. Here's my website. I was just looking at it. Uh, but if I, I'll come over to, to ClickFunnels, I'll come back to my setting. Oh, no, settings. No, 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 not you. Go, get out of here. Settings and webhooks. So I set up a webhook. Um, that's my webhook. I probably shouldn't show that one. Now I'm going to have to set, it up, set up a new one. Uh, but whatever, uh, when you're setting up webhooks, the service that you're using may expect you to respond a certain way. And again, you have to check the documentation. I just don't know which it is for your particular use case. Sometimes when they are sending information to you, they're expecting a response right away. And the reason they may be expecting a response right away is because they're not, the, the service is not going to um, update on their end. So um, an example is I've just built a, where is it? Um, not that, not that, not that, not that. A chatbot. I built a, an updated chatbot for a client. Um, and over here, I've got some web, respond to webhooks. And what it is, is it's an incoming webhook. It's a, a chat message. And that chat message is actually a webhook from a website. And then when the it's done being processed by the AI, I'm responding to the website in order to update the chatbot on that person's website. All right, so that's one example. But here on ClickFunnels, um, when it's when I somebody hits submit form, it's sending the webhook to my N8N process, and it's not waiting for the webhook to be refreshed in order to update anything on the page. The page is already refreshed to the next step of my funnel. So instead, I would have my webhook set to immediately. That way. ClickFunnels knows that the webhook has been triggered successfully. Everything is good. We're all in the clear. Now, um, that brings me to the response code. So you do have some other options here for um, your, your webhooks. By and large, you're not necessarily going to need most of them. You might need to get receive raw body. You might need to be re receiving a binary data. So instead of like text, you might be receiving a download of some type. So that'd be binary data. Uh, you, you can have it ignore bots who are making requests into your, your webhook. You could even just whitelist specific AP, IPs that are uh, internet, you know, IP addresses that are allowed to, to access it. Um, but the one that kind of matters here I want to talk about is response code. So different response codes mean different things. And it actually, thankfully, NADN explains what each response code is, is about. Uh, the most common one that you might see, especially if you're doing an immediate response, is 200. That just means all clear, we got the data, thank you very much. All right, um, another one that you might see is a, uh, what is it, a, four, a, 30, a 302? You might see a 302 or a 301, uh, and that is if you need to up, so if you need a website to send you information and then update to go to the next page or to another page, so if you're not necessarily using ClickFunnels, uh, you can use one of these two. And then you would have um, your response here. Um, and I think if I do the, actually, if I think I do the 302, um, if I do that, I then have to add a header. And the header would be uh, the new URL that I'd be sending them to. 
And so this code just lets them know that, hey, we got your response, but you actually need to go over here. And then we'd send them to a different URL. We would hit this uh, respond to webhook node. It would pass that back to the website. The website would then see the response and then update, refresh to go to the next page. And there might be a little bit more than that. You might need some extra uh, JavaScript or HTML code on your website in order to process that request, but that's a little bit more advanced. All right, and so um, just kind of, that's the basics of what happens with a webhook. It's just kind of an input for the data that you're getting. And then what you would do is here in between the webhook and a respond to webhook, assuming that you're, you're not doing an immediate response, you might just have it set to using web, uh, respond to webhook node. Um, you could also do a uh, when last node finishes, but um, I like to use the respond to webhook node. That way I know clearly where I want it to respond because I might have other processes that occur afterwards that I don't want passed back to the website or to the service that I'm using. But all you do is you come in here and you'd fill in the details. You'd maybe add an AI agent, you know, um, you do a define below here, and then you just, you know, like normal, you, your webhook is gonna get you information. It's gonna have some sort of JSON schema. You're gonna drag that information in here and then process it, have your system prompt, and then maybe it would pass back to the respond to webhook in the format that you want it to. So for um, the chatbot, like I said, the, the information comes in, it, the AI processes that information, and I have mine go, go through kind of a, a more extensive process than just like that. Um, but it comes in here, and then it responds it right back to the chatbot, and the chatbot, boom, there's your answer. And so that's kind of webhooks in a nutshell. I like to think of them as the poor man's API access, but you know, at the end of the day, pretty much all of the APIs that you're using are probably using a webhook in some respect anyway in order to pass information back and forth to N8N. So if you found this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like and share the video because it really does help get this information out there to those who need it. And if you're looking for more helpful N8N tutorials or N8N workflows to get yourself started, please check out my free school community and the, uh, the link is in the description below. I have over 30 different workflows that are you know, available all for free that you can tweak, edit, use to your heart's content. Uh, please engage with the community. We love getting people in there telling us how they're updating these things to be able to use it for their specific work, uh, use cases because you never know who you're gonna be able to help. Otherwise, I'm Bradford Carlton. Let's automate your success together.